Hello YouTube, my name is Nero, today we have some more Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, and in this video, I wanted to do a review of the upcoming Codumentary. The Codumentary, for those that don't know, is a 90 minute long fan made documentary about the history of the Call of Duty franchise and the Call of Duty esports scene. Now when I say it's a fan made documentary, I mean it's a fan made documentary. It was not funded, authorized, or approved in any way by Activision, Infinity Ward, Treyarch, Sledgehammer, anybody pretty much. It's a fan-made documentary. It's been in development for about five years now. It's set to publicly release tomorrow on September 19th at 10 a.m. Pacific on VOD platforms such as iTunes, Google Play, Xbox, PlayStation, the Steam Store, so on and so forth. It's also going to be coming to DVD and Blu-ray at a later date, and it's not going to be free. The documentary itself is going to cost you $13.99 on most of your digital platforms, so it's going to be 33% off on Steam during the first week of its release. Because this documentary is not just going to be a free one you can watch anywhere i wanted to do this review so you guys have an idea of what you're getting into so you can make a decision as to whether or not you might actually want to purchase it and full disclosure before we go any further i am not being paid to do this review but an early access copy of the film was sent to me to watch and make this review with and they also gave me some stock footage essentially of the film itself to use here in this video which i'm going to intersplice with some modern warfare remaster gameplay with that all out of the way ladies and gentlemen let's get into the review itself in short without going into too much detail if you just want a yes or a no I think if you're a huge Call of Duty nerd, you are going to love this documentary. I thoroughly enjoyed my time watching the documentary start to finish because it accomplished what it set out to do, and that was to provide a behind-the-scenes look at the history of the Call of Duty franchise from the perspective of the people that were there, the people that actually made the games, the people that founded Infinity Ward, made the original Call of Duty games, former community managers, fans, pro players, industry insiders. They have so many awesome perspectives in this documentary, and it's actually pretty well ton for being a fan-made film. It starts off at the beaches of Normandy with paratroopers jumping out of airplanes reenacting the American airborne landings. And in my opinion, this was a great way to start off a film because number one, it sets the stage for the Call of Duty franchise and its roots within World War II. But number two, it also shows that just because this is an independent documentary doesn't mean it's going to be a bad documentary, right? Because this isn't a guy in his living room giving you the history of the franchise. What they did is they went on location for this film. They take a to Normandy. They take us outside of Activision Studios. They take us to London, to Paris, to Brazil, to eSport events and midnight releases. They take us all over the world because that's where they had to go to get the proper interviews with the people that were actually responsible essentially for making the Call of Duty franchise. And of course, we have a lot of familiar faces. We have former community managers JD2020 and Robert Bowling. We have Vince Sampella, who essentially made the Call of Duty franchise. We have Chance Glasgow. We've got Hastro. We've got Nade Shot. We've got Ali A. All these people are in this documentary and it was really cool to see that interest place with all the on location filming and just it was a really well put together film in that respect don't get me wrong it's it's rough around the edges at points it's a fan made film but it's really well done for a fan made film and it does give you a lot of information about the Call of Duty franchise from the perspective of the people who are responsible for putting together the Call of Duty franchise essentially producer Jonathan Beals said that the biggest challenge in putting together this film was fitting the 15 year history of the franchise into 90 minutes and I can say that was definitely evident while I was watching the codumentary. Certain parts of Call of Duty's history were given a very big spotlight in this film while other parts were seemingly glossed over because maybe they weren't as important. A good example of this, the founding of the Call of Duty series is a big focal point of the codumentary, right? They focus on that quite a bit because it's the foundation, the, the start of the Call of Duty series. They talk about how it kind of started all the way back with Medal of Honor Allied Assault. For those that don't know, Medal of Honor Allied Assault is kind of considered to be Call of Duty Zero because it was created by a studio called 2015 Games and all 22 members of the original Infinity Ward team had worked on Medal of Honor Allied Assault as part of 2015 Games and then they of course left that studio, they founded Infinity Ward and they got backing from Activision then they of course made the original Call of Duty game. So essentially, Medal of Honor Allied Assault is kind of the first quote-unquote Call of Duty game and that's kind of an interesting thing. They talk about that at length and they show the original studio 
and they had people that worked on the game, talked about what they thought about going into it, and just, it was a really cool part of it, but as a result, they spent so much time on the foundation that they didn't really focus as much on Call of Duty 2 or Call of Duty 3. They did, however, have a big section on Call of Duty 4 because, of course, it was a big turning point in the Call of Duty franchise, moving away from World War II, and they covered everything, guys. As a big fanboy of Call of Duty 4, I loved that section of the documentary, right? Because they go over everything from Activision originally rejecting the game because they didn't think the modern setting would be very successful. They didn't think people wanted that. They wanted to stick to World War II. They talked about how Infinity Ward had to make this secret prototype behind Activision's back that they would eventually show them that would eventually convince Activision to allow Modern Warfare. It was actually the mission Crew Expendable, the first mission of the campaign, which kind of convinced Activision that Modern Warfare would be a good idea. They went over how the dev team would go on these field trips to Marine exercises to get hands-on with modern weapons and modern gear because they were game developers and they weren't exactly sure what it was like to shoot an M4 or an M16 or what have you and they went there and they recorded sounds and they just saw the weapons up close and in person because they wanted to make the game as authentic as possible. They discussed how Call of Duty 4 actually took a lot of inspiration, believe it or not, from World of Warcraft. When it came to leveling and progression and unlocks, that was all inspired from World of Warcraft because up until that point in the Call of Duty series, leveling and unlocks and stuff like that wasn't really a thing. Like, they had some elements of it in the previous games, but not really to the extent that we saw in Call of Duty 4. They also talk about how Treyarch, in the background, began work on World at War one year before COD 4 was released because Activision wasn't entirely convinced that Modern Warfare was going to be successful. They wanted to kind of fall back on World at War as kind of the safe bet. And of course, we know how that turned out. COD 4, wildly popular and successful. World at War, good game, but not nearly as popular and successful. Modern Warfare 2 also played a pretty big role in the documentary as well. They covered everything from the No Russian controversy and the game potentially being banned in many countries across the world, to Vince Ampella and Jason West being fired by Activision, then of course going to form Respawn Entertainment. And we get to see that from the perspective of people who were there, talking about the security teams and stuff like that that were there at their office and how Jason and Vince were just kind of gone one day. And it was really interesting to see that kind of, that entire meltdown essentially from the people who were actually there and hear their side of the story. Unfortunately, games like Black Ops and Modern Warfare 3 were not covered nearly as much as what we saw with Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2, but they were definitely involved, right? One really cool part was when former Treyarch community manager Josh Olin was talking about the creation of the original Black Ops and how they were able to take these creative liberties because they were doing these black operations, these deniable ops, and he also talked about how originally it was going to be called Call of Duty Vietnam, then it was going to be called Call of Duty Cold War, then they eventually settled on Call of Duty Black Ops. I thought that was really interesting to hear from his perspective. The second half of the film had a pretty big focus on esports. Once they got up to about Black Ops 2 and the Call of Duty timeline, it became less about the history and the rise of Call of Duty and more about the history and the rise of Call of Duty esports. And I've got to say, guys, as somebody who's not even that interested in competitive Call of Duty, I still found this particular part of the documentary to be quite engaging because they talk about the rise of esports in general, not even just COD, but then they do start comparing competitive COD to other competitive games like CSGO. They talk about the World League and how much money is being thrown around. Then, of course, they have interviews from Nadeshot and Hastro and different coaches and pro players and insiders. It was actually quite interesting, but unfortunately, that's kind of where the documentary itself wraps up to an extent, right? They briefly mention Call of Duty Ghost and they tell a really cool story about how Ghost was kind of inspired from the character Ghost from Modern Warfare 2, but after that, they really just wrapped up the documentary itself. They rarely discussed anything about Advanced Warfare or Black Ops 3, and they definitely didn't talk about Infinite Warfare or Modern Warfare Remastered whatsoever, which was really unfortunate to me, man. I was really hoping they were going to have like this big section where they talk about taking the series from boots on the ground to advanced movement and how supply drops were implemented, but unfortunately, that was not in the documentary. but it sort of makes sense, right? When they started production, it was five years ago, right? So Black Ops 2 slash Ghosts were out at the time, and that's where they kind of wrapped up filming. They, of course, filmed some current events, and they started production on working on the entire history of the Call of Duty franchise, but while they were doing that, Call of Duty was busy making even more history, so there had to be a cutoff point, and this perfectly sets up the possibility for a Codumentary 2, where they just continue on where they left off, but I'm not going to speculate about that. We're going to focus on the reality, and the reality is the Codumentary is coming out tomorrow. It's going to be about $14, and it is a very good documentary, in my opinion, for what it is. It's rough around the edges. If you do decide to watch, I'm sure you guys are going to notice. The beginning of the film has this 3D rendered bullet being shot through the Codumentary logo, and it just looks really bad, like very cheap, very... 
very independent, let's say. And when you're when you're watching that, you're thinking to yourself, like, goodness, what have I got myself into? This is going to be terrible. But then they immediately jump over to Normandy with you know people jumping out of airplanes. It's like, wow, wait a minute, this is actually pretty awesome. So it's rough around the edges. It's an independent production. If it were actually you know made by Activision, it would be a bit more polished, but it wouldn't be as good because we get to see the real story of the Call of Duty franchise, the real story of the Call of Duty phenomenon, as they put it. And I think it's better because of that. Again, rough around the edges, but worth it. I mean, it's expensive. Don't get me wrong. $14 for a documentary is probably ex too expensive for a lot of you. And I completely understand that. But if you can find it cheaper or if you decide to get it on Steam where it's going to be under $10, I recommend checking it out if you guys are big fans of the Call of Duty series that also really are interested in the behind the scenes stuff. Because that's what the entire documentary is. It's the behind the scenes stuff of the Call of Duty franchise. And I personally had a blast watching it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you guys here in this video. Thank you guys all so much for listening. It was a bit longer than I anticipated, but man, it's a 90 minute long movie that I'm trying to review for you guys so you can determine whether or not you actually want to purchase it. And of course, in that 90 minute long movie, they try to cover pretty much the entire history of the Call of Duty franchise. So it's like, wow, that's a lot to talk about. So I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Hopefully I did a relatively good job of reviewing it. If you did enjoy the video, please drop me a like rating. And if you do plan to actually get the documentary or if you end up watching it, come back to the comments of this video and let me know what you guys thought or just tweet me on Twitter. It's at Nero Tweets. I love interacting with you guys on Twitter. So once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Drop me a rating. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.